video, we're going to talk about solving linear equations. We're actually going to talk about solving two types of linear equations. So we're going to look at linear equations in one variable, which are written something like ax plus b equals c. And we're going to look at solving linear equations in two variables. And in this case, we've got one little difference, and that's on the second term here. Instead of ax plus b equals c, it's ax plus by equals c. So the two variables are x and y. Now, in the first case, uh, we just need a, b, and c to be real numbers, and we need for the number in front of x to not be 0. So a is not 0. In the second case, ax plus by equals c, we need a, b, and c to be real numbers, but a and b can't both be 0. So it's OK if a is 0. It's OK if b is 0, but not at the same time, or we would not really have an equation anymore. When we're solving the linear equation in one variable, we're just isolating the only variable in the equation. And the only variable in the equation is the x in the first term, ax plus b equals c. When we're solving a linear equation in two variables, so ax plus by equals c, we're isolating for the indicated variable. And so if I said, for example, solve for y, then I would be solving for the y in the by term. If I said solve for x, I would be solving for the x in the ax term. So it's important in a two variable equation to know which variable you're solving for. If there is only one variable in the problem, an x, a t, whatever it is, you're just solving for that. So we don't usually say solve for x. We simplify it to just solve. Now, when we work with equations, the equal sign is what breaks the equation into two balanced sides, the left side and the right side. And we can do a lot of operations to an equation, but it's important to remember where we can just do it once to each side of the equation, to each side of the equal sign. So for example, if we started with the equation x minus 5 equals 9, we can add a number to both sides. We can add 5 to both sides. And the reason we do that is we're trying to get the x by itself. So how would I get rid of a minus 5 on the left? I would add 5. So now I have the equation x minus 5 plus 5 equals 9 plus 5. On the left, that simplifies to be x. And on the right, that simplifies to be 14. So we have x equals 14. We've isolated the x. We've solved the equation. We can also subtract a number from both sides. So let's say we have 6 plus x equals 7. The 6 is the part we need to get rid of on the left-hand side. And so we have a positive 6 there. We need to subtract 6 from both sides. So we'll subtract 6 on the left side, and we'll subtract 6 on the right side. We can only do it once. So we have 6 minus 6 plus x on the left, and 7 minus 6 on the right. That leaves us with just x on the left, because 6 minus 6 is 0, and then 1 on the right. So we have the solution. We've isolated the x. x is 1. Likewise, we can multiply both sides by a number. So if we have x divided by 2 equals 5, we can uh, get rid of the divided by 2 if we simply multiply both sides by 2. So on the left, 2 times x over 2, and on the right, 2 times 5. When we simplify the 2's, 2 over 2 reduces to 1. We really have 1x equals 10, and we write a simpler form of that. Rather than writing 1x equals 10, we just write x equals 10. And the reason is, we, we actually do it in English too. We rarely say, I have one orange. We say, I have an orange. Right? We don't say the number 1. Uh, so we do the same thing in math. If we only have one of them, we don't have to say the 1 part. OK, finally, we can divide both sides of an equation by a number. So let's say we start with 15 equals 3x. We just want x on the right. That's isolating the variable. So we need to get rid of the 3 times x. And to get rid of the 3 that's multiplied by x, we would divide by 3 on both sides. When we divide by 3 on both sides, we have 15 over 3 equals 3x over 3. And that simplifies to be 5 equals x. We've 
isolated the variable, we've solved the equation. Don't let it bother you that the x is on the right side of the equation. As long as the x is isolated, then you've solved it. Now, there are often efficient choices to solve equations and inefficient choices to solve equations. And I want you to, to be able to do the action, even if it's the inefficient one, you need to be able to do it correctly. I want you to practice with this. I'm gonna ask you to pause the video for a second and go ahead and try uh, the eight problems below where you're gonna do something on both sides that doesn't actually isolate the X for the first four problems. And then you're gonna do the right thing for the second four problems. But I do wanna make sure that you know what happens on both sides of the equation when you do something inefficient. So pause the video, try the problems, and then come back to me. Okay, we're back. The first equation to solve was 10 equals x minus four. And we were told to subtract four on both sides. So we're going to do 10 minus four equals x minus four minus four, which leaves us with six equals x minus eight. And you can see we didn't really help ourselves at all when we did that. The equation got no simpler. The next equation is negative three x equals 12 and we're asked to add three on both sides. So now we'll have negative three X plus three equals 12 plus three, or negative three X plus three equals 15. And in this case, we not only didn't get to an easier equation, we got to a harder equation. We started with negative three X equals 12, and we've arrived at negative three X plus three equals 15. So we're, we're kind of moving backwards here, but we can do the operation on both sides. Okay, the next one is negative x equals five, and we've been asked to add x to both sides. So that would be negative x plus x on the left equals five plus x on the right. Now, negative x plus x, that's like um, having something and taking it away. That gives us zero and that's equal to five plus x. So again, we're kind of worse off than we were before because now the x isn't even by itself on one side of the equation. We'd have to move it again to, uh, to get to a solution. So you can see zero equals five plus x. We haven't really done the most efficient thing here. We would require one more step to finish this, which is to subtract five from both sides. In the fourth equation, we're going to divide both sides by nine. We have nine equals three X to start with. So we'll divide by nine, giving us nine over nine equals three X over nine. Nine divided by nine is one, it doesn't go away to make zero. It goes and it simplifies to be one. And then the three over nine would reduce to one third. So we could say we have one X over three or just one equals x over three because we don't write that coefficient of one. Now in each of these cases, we could have just made a more efficient choice, a choice that would have solved the equation in one step. So let's go back and do that. In 10 equals x minus four, we just wanna get the x by itself. So to get rid of the minus four, we wanna add four on both sides. That would give us 10 plus four on the left, and x minus four plus four on the right. And so then we have 14 equals x, and we've solved for x. Negative three x equals 12. To isolate the x, we need to get rid of the negative three that's multiplied by x. So to get rid of that multiplication, we're gonna divide by negative three. So we'll have negative three x over negative three equals 12 over negative three. Now be particularly careful with negative coefficients. Make sure that you're dividing by the same negative coefficient on both sides. So don't divide one side by negative three and one side by positive three. That doesn't work. <laughs> so we now have on the left x equals and on the right negative four. And we've solved the equation. The third equation, negative x equals five. There was actually a really simple way to solve this. And that was to recognize that what we have is negative one x equals five. We don't write the coefficient one. So to get rid of the negative one, which is multiplied by x, we need to divide by negative one. 
and we'll divide by negative 1 on both sides, giving us x equals negative 5. Finally, 9 equals 3x. We're isolating the x. It's currently multiplied by 3, so we'll divide by 3 on both sides. 9 over 3 equals 3x over 3. That leaves us with 3 equals x, and we've solved for the variable.